Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another live episode of the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, part of the 90 Min Football Network. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeon, and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined once again by my good friend, footballer, broadcaster, Jamal Fifield. How's it going, my friend? All good. No complaints, all good. No complaints, that's it. As we said on, on the last show, yeah, top of the league, yeah. what's there to complain yeah, about? Nothing at all. Um, how are you getting on? How's how's fitness, the, the, the work back towards fitness, how's that going? Yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, it's always tough being injured. It's like the worst part of being a footballer. Best job in the world, but... The worst part is when you're injured, you watch all the boys going out to train. But I'm back jogging now. Um, so it's just about keeping mentally strong and, and hoping that I get back without no setbacks. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, look, I wanted to pick your brains on the Arsenal defence. Being a defender yourself, yeah. um, I, I really wanted to kind of try and get your thoughts and, and sort of dig into a defender's kind of mentality, looking yeah. at the way Arsenal are defending at the moment. Um, I don't think it's been flawless. I think that there have been moments where we've left ourselves a little bit exposed. Yeah. I think there's been moments where we've been a little bit rash in certain situations. But I think that's kind of an associated risk with the way that Arsenal are looking to play. Yeah. We've talked about it before, the high line. Um, you know, you mentioned Gabriel as well as someone that you know people are looking at at the moment. Let's start with Gabriel. I think he's a good starting point yeah. because I feel like without his aggression, we can't really play the way we want to play. And that means that from time to time he's going to make mistakes and he's going to be exposed. But it feels like at a time when everything's positive around Arsenal, people are looking for something to have a go about. And Gabriel seems to be that right no, now. No, definitely. And I think um, it seems to be one of those defences that, don't come out of your holes and everyone stays in a rigid line and we just shuffle across. But the way Arteta wants Arsenal to play is if a player goes short, a Salah, um, um, a Jota like they were, Gabriel was stepping in with them. He mm. wasn't afraid of what's behind him because he trusts Tommy Asu, he trusts Saliba to cover him. And I think that is what has been the best thing about Arsenal. Um, they've all had each other's backs. Um, in defence especially and if, if they breach them then Ramsdale there to get him out of jail and that's what obviously he's paid for but it's sometimes the hardest thing to do to get your mate out of jail because in a in a tough situation where it can go either way sometimes you always got to be that cover for your mate um, but again people are talking about Gabriel and I, and I said in the last show his endeavour is what makes him who he is but it's something that may be catching him out at the same time um, because he's so all action he wants to make those blocks he wants to make those tackles but sometimes it, um, it can be tough when you are running at full speed you know you, you make a, a little nick here and the player goes down and then it's up to the referee um, but I think he's going to learn from the two the last two games where he's had two incidents that could have led to penalties and one obviously did um, but again I wouldn't change him and the way he defends because that aggression is what you want from your defenders when I look back at the Liverpool game specifically and, and Liverpool's first goal, the first equaliser, one of the things I noticed was obviously after Gabriel's miscalculation, there's a moment where he and Saliba have to cross over. As a centre-back, am I right in saying that's something that you never want to do? It's like it's one of the cliches, like, a, mm. like another one, our goalkeeper should never be beaten at his front post. But sometimes in the game, that's going to happen. And um, I think that goal would have disappointed Arteta simply because... It was, a long, it was one long ball from Trent and it kind of confused us. Um, and he was quite unlucky with his first touch because he nearly cleared it. Um, but again, Saliba had to go off cross and cover. Um, and Gabriel done the right thing by running the straight line towards goal. It's just that the ball was so good that he couldn't get there in time. And let's be honest, we're playing against world-class players week in, week out in the Premier League. You know, um, some really good players, not all world class, obviously, but they're, play they're playing at the top of their game. Um, so there, there are going to be times when there's going to be mistakes made. But at the end of the day, it's all about getting round as a team and becoming that unit. It's, it's us against them and you can't breach us. OK, and if you do, we're not going to let you can score another, you know, um, and that's the most important thing. OK, if you concede one, don't concede another. Obviously, we did. But again, the front boys got us out of jail. Um, but sometimes if, if you do need to um, switch over, it happens. It's just about getting in the right positions. And that was the one where the high line was maybe we could have dropped off a little bit more because there wasn't pressure on the ball. Um, but it's a, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I don't think we'll concede many like that. Looking at William Saliba, who's been playing alongside Gabriel, I mean, I'm running out of good things to say about this yeah. kid. He's, he's been immense since he's come in. Yeah, yeah. What's impressed you the most sort of from defender to defender? Um... He's reading of the game. Um, I think he got caught out, might have been the first goal, where he 
went to his left and the and the balls played in behind him. Um, but again, the second player. goal you mean in the second Is half? The second one. Yeah, where Jota plays the ball through for Firmino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That goal. So he's come out of his hole there and left a bit of a bit of a too big of a gap. Um, but what I've really been impressed with is his reading of the game. Um, there's times when he gets in positions where he does have to make a tackle. And my dad always brought me up that you come off, if you have to slide tackle, you're in the wrong position. And you don't really see him slide. He comes off the pitch, his kit looks pristine like it doesn't need to be washed. And that's a sign of a defender that has been in the right place. Um, similar to Rio, similar to John Terry. Paolo Maldini vibes. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying that he's of their level yet, but there are characteristics that I can see in his game. Um, and what he fills you with is a bit of confidence. Like when, we, when he played in the Liverpool game, there was one, I think he nutmegged someone in their opposition box and he was crafting on his own six yard box. And me as defender, I'm not, get it out, kick it out. And my heart was in my mouth, but I was thinking the, the confidence that the team had in him and the confidence that he, the self belief has in himself, you can see it's just growing and growing with each game he plays. Um, and again, he's had, there was a few tests and then you thought, okay, yeah, he, he got through that. And let's see how he does against the Canes, the Salas. And he's doing really well. Um, so, no, I, I think it's a credit to him as well because as a player, you always want to play. And he's gone out on a few loans. And I heard that Arteta was a bit nervous about how his relation was with him. But he's just come out there and proved everyone wrong. And that's what you've got to do as a footballer. But, OK, great. We beat Liverpool, but now you've got to go and do it again against Leeds. And yeah. you're playing Europa League, you've got to do it there. So it's a, it's a forever game of improving and, and proving that you're good enough. There must be a moment, like, as much as Saliba was frustrated by the loan spells and frustrated by the fact that he was left by Arsenal, essentially, to sit around because they, they failed to get the loan deal done and then, of course, he wasn't registered. There must be a part of him now that, that looks at it and goes, yeah, maybe that extra year in France has, has put me in the position where I can handle the Premier League now. I'm sure he had plenty of self-belief, yeah. self-confidence. But I think deep down, even if he wouldn't admit it publicly, I think he probably knows that actually that extra year is done in the world of good. Do you know what? I'm not sure, you know. I think as footballers, we always back ourselves, whether or not the manager thinks we need another year or uh, to, to sit and watch. I think he would have felt, I would have done this two years ago, Mikel, if you let me. Um, but I believe that the spells did him a world of good. And even though he was frustrated not to be playing, he also got to see and train with players that were doing it week in, week out. So he got to understand, OK, he made that mistake there. So I always say to players when they're on the bench, watch the players in your position and watch the opposition. So when you go on, you know exactly what he's going to do or where his flaws are. Now, he, can, he was literally studying in a way, do you know what I mean, while watching. Um, but I, I, don't, I think he, he would have... Um, I think he would have got, not caught out, but I think it would have, it would have improved him, that lone spell. But at the same time, I think he really would have been confident in his ability to go in there and do a job. I think he would have been confident, but the other, the other point, uh, the other side to this is, was the team good enough to cater for a 20, 21-year-old coming in in the way they can now? Because I feel like now with that stability that you get from, let's say, Tierney at left back, Tommy Asu or White at right back, and then Gabriel alongside you. I know we've talked about Gabriel being a bit rash, but the defence, the goalkeeper, the midfield, it's all in such better shape that maybe now is the right time for him because of the environment as much as yeah. how much he's developed himself in the last 12 months. Yeah, that might be a good point. But that's another thing that I'm so impressed with. Ben White um, moving to right back and Saliba because they're both inexperienced, let's say, because he's playing at right back. I don't know how, how much he's played that growing up, but to put him there and then an inexperienced centre-half in Saliba there, the way they're working together and covering around each other, it's, all, it's almost though um, the defence has been like, okay, it's us versus them. And the defence wants to show that they're the vital part of this Arsenal team. And the attacking side is saying, no, we're what gets the, gets the machine moving. So it's kind of like they're in competition with each other to see who influences games the most. And when it comes together, it's an amazing thing. Um, but again, the whole team, not just the back four, the whole team is defending. You see how the press starts from the front. Um, and then when it gets back to the, um, the back four, they're doing their job. And then you've got obviously Xhaka and um, Thomas Partey in there, just cleaning up everything. And it's, it's a joy to watch. I love, I love seeing a good defensive um, performance. Um, and Ramsdale as well, he's just given everyone the confidence to go and play that high line. Yeah, he has for sure. Um, let's talk a little bit about Tommy Asu. Um, another player who's shown incredible versatility. When we signed him, people were saying he's a centre-back. 
Um, you know, that's where he played in a back three for Bologna, plays at centre-back for Japan, his national team. And then he came to Arsenal and, and got put in at right back. And then he showed very quickly that he's a very capable right back. But at the weekend, we saw him play against a very good Liverpool side at left back. I mean, how amazing is it as a manager, I guess, to have a player like that, that you can put in any of those positions and feel that he'll do a good job? The confidence of the team is something that really helps. I think, is there a common language that they all speak? I don't know, because they all seem to be singing off the same hymn sheet. Like They all understand each other and what they're going to do. Um, but he's been outstanding since he's come back in. And to play against Salah and mark him out of the game and then they're chasing the goal and they replace him, that just shows that when, when a, when a centre-half, um, sorry, a centre-forward goes off, me and my centre-back partners, whether it's Will Evans or Femi and Samney, we look at each other and give each other a nod, like, yeah, that's one in the pocket. Like, let's get another one on yeah. and see what we can do. We've so dealt with him. He's we've gone. dealt with him, like, he's done. Um, but, no, it's, been, it's, it's, it's amazing to see how he tight he gets. He backs himself. Um, and that's what you want to see from a defender. Um, and Arteta has probably seen that. His one-on-one -on -one defending has really improved. Um, and it's something that I think one of his strong points. So whether or not you're playing right back or, or left back or centre back, the, 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 the arts of defending doesn't really change. Get tight to your man. Don't let him cross or shoot. You know, um, stick with the line. And, and I think that's what he's done. When you're playing against teams that press you, though, like in the way that Liverpool want to do, obviously Tommy Asu having that ability to play with either foot yeah. is, is really, really helpful. Um, how much value should we place on that? Because I've said in the past that I think he's, when people talk about him being two-footed, I think he's a little bit overblown in that. <laughs> yeah, he can c make a clearance with his weaker foot. Yeah. He can play a basic pass. He can control the ball with his weaker foot. But, you know, he's not Santi Cazorla. Let's let's oh, be honest course. about this. Yeah. So, both feet, yeah. yeah, I mean, how valuable <laughs> as a defender is it to be able to be at least competent with both feet when you're facing a team that want to press you like I think that? at that level... The Premier League, you've got to be able to... Anything you can do on your right, you've got to be able to do on your left. Um, whether or not, whether, whether it's a pressurised situation of someone pressing you or having the confidence in just trying it, you know. Um, but it's so important. It's so important. That's something that I tell the boys when, when we coach. A, boy, a young boy said to me yesterday, I didn't want to shoot on my left because I'm not good in it. Well, that's something that you have to practice. And credit to him, that's not something that just happens. That's something that he's worked at. And um, it's held him in good stead because now he's playing at left back, you know. So wherever anyone... It seems as though wherever Arteta want someone to play, they're going to play for him there. And that's a great sign for any manager, you know, and that's a great sign for fans to see that what a manager, what kind of hold he has over his team. Um, players are playing out of position and excelling, you know. There's competition all over the place. You see Rob Holding um, coming on the scoring, you know. You've got um, Suarez coming back, Cedric coming back, who's going to also put pressure on people. So it's something that is what you need to be successful. When players haven't got any competition and they know they're playing every week, that's when they start to get complacent and start to take their foot off the gas. But the way this team are going, it doesn't seem like Arteta or even Ramsdale, because he seems like the driving force for that mm. back four. They're not going to let him rest on their laurels. Taking it back to Gabriel for a minute, one of the things I've said uh, about Gabriel this season is that he's been judged somewhat unfairly against Saliba in the sense of, A, we talked about kind of like one being an aggressor, one yeah. being someone that sits off a little bit. It's clear that he's been instructed to be the aggressor, right? So that's the first thing, aside from it being a part of his character and a part of his game. The other thing is, though, that when Zinchenko's played at left-back, who steps into the midfield far more frequently than Ben White does, for example, on the other side, yeah. that makes Gabriel have a bigger area to cover, doesn't it? And, and so uh, is, are people being harsh on that basis, like uh, almost failing to see that at times, he's playing two positions. He's shifting over in order to, to cover that hole so that Zinchenko can get in the midfield and we can dominate possession. 100%. 100%. And I think it's similar to what, how sometimes they talk about Odegaard and the fact that he maybe gives away possession a little bit too much. But if you want a player, you want your number 10 on the ball a lot. And if you're going to be on the ball, then that means you're probably going to give the ball away more because you've got it more. And you're going to try defence splitting passes, exactly. right? You're not going to play the simple... Exactly that. And it's something that we want Zinchenko to do what he did at Man City, where you become another centre midfield and overload mm. um, the, the midfield. So, yes, you've got more responsibility because then you essentially become a back three and you've got a marshal, a break. You've got a marshal, a boy over the top. And it is tough. But at the end of the day, this is how um, Arteta wants him to play. And I think that Gabriel has been harshly um, critiqued because there's sometimes that like, he comes away with, with the ball clean. He makes um, good decisions. Um, and he's a, he's, a, he's a 
it's one of the, been one of the best centre halves in the league. Yes, you're going to make mistakes, but at the end of the day, there's not one defender that doesn't. What I'm most impressed with is he doesn't let it affect him. If he makes a mistake, okay, cool, he gets on with it. Like after that um, incident in the Tottenham game, he was exceptional. So that's something that I'm most impressed with. How do you deal with a setback? How do you deal with adversity? And the way these Arsenal players are going about it, it's unreal. And we've got to be like careful as well not to get sort of sucked into judging or overanalyzing one or two moments when actually his overall game this season has been really good. And actually the attributes that he brings to the table are a big part of why we can play the high line, why we can dominate teams yeah. the way we've done. So yeah, really, really impressive. Um, Rob Holding is obviously in the squad as well. And we saw him in Europa League action the other night, scored a goal. Um, you know, he's not, he's not renowned for scoring goals, Rob Holding. But he's a character that you feel brings something behind the scenes. You know, he's not played a lot of football. He's been that guy that we throw on with 10 minutes to go when we're protecting a lead as an additional centre-back. And he's done that well. But having, you know, we keep talking about culture and the squad and the character of people. How important is it to have someone like that who gets it? who I'm not going to say he's content with playing that bit part role. He, he'll obviously want to play more, but it is not a disruption. It's not a problem for you as a manager. Yeah, he's a team player, you know, and that's something that is so important that he drives standards. Even if he's not playing, he's driving the standards. He's keeping Gabriel and he's keeping the sleeper on their toes, knowing that, okay, if you have a bad game, I'm ready to step in and I'm going to keep my shirt. Um, but at the same time, he's playing his role. And he's, waiting, and he's waiting for his time to come. I think that's so important, you know. You talk about culture, you talk about a group environment. Um, and I think Martin Lee or Saka said in the interview, it's a family. We're a family and where everyone's on their toes and everyone's ready to step in. That is what has been created at the moment. And when you've got that family feel and everybody's pushing the right direction, only good things are gonna come. Um, so as I said before, when you have people knocking on the door, it keeps everyone on their toes, keeping everyone at their A game, you know? So I think he's been amazing, um, just being that squad player. I know every player wants to play, but at the same time, it's so important that you're not a bad egg and you're not a disruptive influence. Mm. Like other players have been in the past, and that just happens. That's just football naturally, everyone wants to play. Um, but he's going about his business in the right way. Zinchenko or Tierney? Let's have the debate. It's a big debate. It's been going on all season. Yeah. Um, I, I fear that you're going to say it's, it's not... Well, no, it's fair to say yeah. that it's not that straightforward that you can say Tierney or Zinchenko. Mm. But what are the benefits that both bring in your mind and what are maybe the shortcomings that so, maybe would lead you to picking the other one? So I, I'm, I really enjoy technical players. So I love a player that has got a clean strike of the ball, um, moves the ball well and... I just see something in Tierney, because they're, they're both great attacking-wise. Um, but I think the strike, I think he hit the post, Tierney, recently, with just the cleanest strike, and he's just so honest. In, in it was in the Europa League, it was the other night, yeah. Like, the cleanest strike you'll ever see, that like textbook, how you teach a child to kick a ball, like, that is everything, head down, over the ball, kick through it, follow through, like, it was everything that I love in, 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 in football technique. Um, but again, then Zinchenko gives you that, tactical awareness he's so cool there's one time where he pretended to pass and the player ran past he just turned it out casual not like there's 80,000 people and there's yeah. a guy breathing down your neck like it was just like he's a back gardener with his little one but it was crazy it was it was amazing to see um and again it's, it's it's so hard to compare and it's so hard to separate the two I don't think I think Arteta knows whichever one I put in there is going to do a great job it's just who gets a nod on the day, you know? I think there's times when we're gonna to have to have a play. I think it depends on the game. If, we're, if there's gonna be a game where we need to keep possession um, and maybe unlock a different um, kind of defense, Sinchenko because what he gives you going into that midfield and linking up play. Um, but again, Tierney's one of them players that, and this is what managers love, players that they know exactly what they're gonna get from him. They're always consistent, yep. eight out of 10 every single week. And that's something that he'll give you. Not saying Zinchenko won't, but I'm going to sit on the fence, H. I'm not. Gonna, <laughs> I can't. I can't pick. I can't pick. I well, can't pick. It's interesting you say that because and again, then again, injuries is something that both of them have struggled with. Yep. Um, and it seems as though right now Tierney is one who's fit. So I'm going to go with one who's fit. Well, it's interesting you say that because sort of looking at it going into the season, that was my mindset. It was when we're at home, when we are going to dominate the ball, when we want to overload the midfield, when we're trying to break down teams with a low block, it will be Zinchenko mm. all the time. That's what I expected. And then I thought maybe when we go away from home in the, the tougher games against some of the big sides, it will be Tierney. 
But then we went to Old Trafford and it was Zinchenko, mm. which we went completely against yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And then we played Spurs at home, a team that I thought were very dangerous on the break. And I was worried about their wide players. Yeah. And again, he went Zinchenko. Oh, yeah. So I'm starting to think that maybe I've read that wrong in terms of what Mikel Arteta thinks. But the other thing with Zinchenko is that he gives you a midfield option as well. And I think, well, I've been surprised that at times when both Tierney and Zinchenko have been fit, and we've been a bit light in midfield. We've we've been missing Thomas Partey. Mm. He hasn't gone Zinchenko in there. Are you surprised at that? Because I thought he was brought in to play both roles, and it seems like he's very much been labelled by Mikel Arteta as a left back and a left back only. Yeah, I think it was not so so much surprising. It's just that um, was that a time when Lokonga went into the midfield. Mm. Now I think I read somewhere that his um, passer rating is like through the roof. Like he, he keeps possession on, I think, 98% of his passes and stuff like that. So I think it's tough when you've got a player like him knocking on the door to then overlook him for someone that's been playing at left back. I think to keep the harmony of the squad, and it's obviously, again, tough decision that Arteta's got to make. Um, he made a judgment call on that one. Um, but I wasn't really surprised, no. I just think it's one of those things where Zinchenko comes with a certain um, experience. He's been at Man City where the standards are right sky high. If you're not winning the league every year, it's a failure, you know? So I think that having that is invaluable. Um, and not to say Tierney hasn't, because he's obviously come from Celtic where obviously they won the league every year, but it's a different kind of um, pressure. Yeah. Um, but again, I just think the technical um, know-how, uh, sorry, tactical know-how of Zinchenko is massive. And I think what he brings at left back is something that, you can't really put into words. It's a calmness, of, uh, an experience, as you say. Yeah. I've been there, done that. I'm a senior player. I'm in a, you know, and I'm not saying Kieran isn't no, those things, course. but there's winning, let's be honest, there's winning the Scottish Premier League and there's been a multiple Premier League winner and, both, and the captain and, of your yeah, country. And winning, winning a league isn't easy at all at any level. Let's, let's mm. not diminish what he did at Celtic, but we know how strong the Premier League is and what Man City... Um, were doing and, and he was a vital part of that you know and you saw how adored he was by Pep Guardiola it's no surprise that they didn't want him to leave um, so yeah it's, it's, it's a tough one Just kind of final uh, bit on the defence are you a little bit concerned by the lack of clean sheets I know we're winning games and I know we're outscoring people and we've clearly got the firepower that we haven't had in recent seasons yeah. but are you a little bit concerned by the lack of clean sheets because if I'm being really picky and really critical, I know we've played against some good teams. Yeah. And so, you know, maybe it's a bit greedy to kind of demand that. You want it all. That. You want it all. But, yeah. <laughs> but that, would be, that would be the next thing for me. Like, yeah. we need to keep more clean sheets. I mean, it's been a while since we heard 1-0 to the Arsenal, hasn't it? Yeah. But um, <laughs> it's tough because it's a young squad um, and goals... I, I think it's one of those things where it's going to become something where we're going to have to keep teams out. Um, it's the hardest thing to do. I think I think it's a lot harder to keep clean sheets than anything else in the game. I think it's so... Um, you, everything has to be perfect. One lapse of concentration, one bit of luck a team scores, you know. Um, it's not something that I'm concerned with. What, I'm, what I'd be concerned with is players are in the wrong position, if um, players were taking unnecessary risks. Um, a lot of the goals that have been scored against us have been by really good play um, and I haven't seen silly mistakes that have led to silly goals on too many occasions where I think you know what that's, that's a systemic you know problem I mean? yeah. so, um, no I'm not really concerned with it I think the way we keep possession um, and see out games and the game management that I'm seeing is something that is keeping us in the lead of game so when, when it's getting down to the last five or five minutes of a game you can see the way we're keeping possession and that's the way to keep the goals out by just keep moving that ball getting into positions and getting on the ball again but no I don't really find it um, an issue we saw there was a really good clip going around of like Arsenal in sort of like the 84th 85th minute against Liverpool just keeping the ball in Liverpool's half and taking the sting out of their opponent and you're right you'd, you'd much rather do it that way than sit on the and edge of your and that was so frustrating because we are used to seeing Liverpool press their life out of teams and I think one of the commentators said what happened to the famous Liverpool press you can't press the ball if you can't see players and those Arsenal boys are moving like shadows they're moving the ball into position and, so, and it's harder to be in possession of the ball than out of it because to give your um, teammate an option you've got to run a lot harder um, and, and be that option and that pass so um, I think that's, that's another amazing thing that we haven't lost our identity in the way that we play football um, and again, all those, all the back four and, and obviously Ramsdale, we can all keep the ball, we can all pass the ball. 
Um, and I think that's so important the way Arteta wants to play. Read a stat earlier today. I don't know if it's true. Aaron Ramsdale's completed more dribbles than Anthony of Manchester United in the Premier League this season. <laughs> you see, that's why people <laughs> get onto Arsenal fans and, and they're getting, we're getting so much stick. But hey, to be fair, he's done quite well since he's gone to United. Though. Yeah, he's done three all right. Games, he's three done goals, right. But no, Ramsdale is, and, he, and he's another unsung hero. I think I think what he's been doing, I think he's knocking on the on the door of England. I think if they want to play the way Southgate does, then he's got to be considered out of him and Pickford. I wouldn't, I don't think he'd have an issue playing putting um, Ramsdale in there. Yeah, no, agree, agree. It's definitely I, I actually think that's that's the bigger debate than the right back debate, to be honest. Yeah, because I know Pickford's really good with his feet as well, but I've seen I was watching it him warm up and sidewinders, just like <laughs> effortless. Low or high, it was just. I've seen midfield players that can't ping the ball around like that. <sighs> Similar to the Man City keeper, yeah. um, the way the way they, they they have so much confidence in him, um, and there's one time on Sunday where he chopped somebody and then kicked it out of play. Okay, he didn't try to overcomplicate it after that initial mistake. He realized how close he was, so I'm okay, getting rid of it instead of trying to pick a pass. And um, I think I think the maturity of him as well to know when to kick it long and when to play. Yeah. It's been huge. Something you'll get better at as, oh, he, as he gets older as well, definitely. for sure. Um, guys, that comes to the end of the episode. Uh, Jamal, thank you so, so much, no mate. Uh, always appreciate your time. Let people know how they can follow you. Um, I'm on Instagram, Jamal Firefield, and Twitter, Jamal Firefield as well. Make sure you follow Borumwood as well. Uh, wishing you luck for the rest Cheers. of the season. I'm sure we'll see you before the end no, of the definitely, season. But, definitely. Uh, yeah, all the best no, with, uh, with all of that, man. Cheers. Cheers.